What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Generic Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2, Jerry for now, the Gambia. Okay, this uh, country is just basically one giant river with land around it. Well, that's kind of every country, isn't it? <laughs> it's a river with the land around it. And it's Bosnia, too. It's the, the Bosnian River, and there's land around it. Wow, I'm... I figured something out, huh? There's something new? <laughs> okay, so anyway. Uh, I know this country has... Is, is known for like uh, that president guy that ran away or something like the other countries around it start like uh, invaded it to get him out of the country or something I don't know I remember reading about it uh, it's like a year ago that happened and uh, basically I believe like the French or like the the, the British like uh, drew circles around the uh, Gambia River like 80 kilometers around the river and that they decided that would be a country it, I don't know. I guess it could it could work. It's one giant navigable river, so trade could you know expand eventually. I guess in the Gambia, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves and let's not pretend like we know geoeconomics it's that much. And let's uh, see what Paul has. The Gambia, not Gambia. The Gambia. You gotta Gambia. The, the. Gambia. It's Gambia, right. not Zambia, not Gambit, not Getbia, as in Bob said, Getbia, Gambia. You're terrible, Paul. It's time to learn <laughs> geography. Now! Hey everyone, welcome to The Gambia. They actually deliberately chose to put the the before Gambia to avoid confusion with Zambia, making it one of the only countries with a the in the shortened title. Wow, Why not like the, the Zambia? Thing I've ever made for a video. Uh, Why didn't they tell Zambia, hey, put a the in front of your name and it would be The Zambia and we would have Gambia today, huh? <laughs> well, Zambia is the bigger one, I guess, so they choose who, what happens, or I guess, uh, whatever. Okay, let's see, um, this place is so interesting, you'll be saying, Dambia! Uh, is that the first time you're using profane language on your show? No, I meant, I meant dam as in a beaver dam. Ha! Ah, I got it. Dude, half of this country I haven't this uh, used profanity in my in my uh, fucking parts. videos either. Not only is it the smallest country on mainland Africa, but it's also disputably the most oddly shaped. Mm -hmm. First of all, Gambia <laughs> is located on the furthest side of that? Western Africa <laughs> off the Atlantic coast. Other than its 80 kilometer coastline on the Atlantic, the Gambia is completely surrounded by Senegal on all three sides and meanders inland following the Gambia River for about 320 kilometers. The country is divided into eight local government areas, including the capital Banjul, which is classified as a city area, located on a small island just at the mouth of the river. The largest city just next door to Banjul, though, is Serakunda, and the entire country has one international airport, Banjul Yundum International, which, by the way, has a bunch of weird airlines that I never heard of that fly to it, like the UK's Thomas Cook Airlines and Lithuania's Small Planet Airlines. Whoa. Off the coast, the furthest plots of land that lay claim to the Gambia are the Bijol Islands. The Gambia is often referred to as the smiling coast of Africa due to the fact that not only are the beaches amazing, but if you look at the map, it kind of looks like Senegal is a deformed Pac-Man looking type of thing, and the Gambia is a cheeky, sultry, Elvis curled lip grin smile. Otherwise, the country in itself that seems looks like, like a, a fake smile. With a underbite. Now you might be thinking, okay, why does this country even exist? Like it's so small. Wouldn't it be easier if they just joined Senegal and became one country? Well, that's a very observant but horrible conclusion. Now you have to understand that in Africa, wow. every stretch of territorial sovereignty claim matters, even if you can just take a morning stroll across one side of the country to the other. The reason why the Gambia is shaped like this is partially because of European colonialism and partially because of complacency. Senegal used to belong to the French Empire and the Gambia used to belong to the British. Essentially, they drew the borders to follow the Gambia River with two straight lines jutting inland from the coast between 13 degrees 9 minutes and 13 degrees 30 minutes north. However, they made a deal and said that the Gambia could have all the land that flowed west of the Halahin Balong River in the south. This did, however, transect a portion of the Janak Peninsula, which is shared by both countries. Somewhere along the halfway point, they decided that the straight lines would stop and that the country would be allotted somewhere between 9 to 12 ish kilometers in every direction around yeah, the river. That's on what each I wanted side to say, not 80 for about kilometers. 320 kilometers. That's not a lot. I mean, area wise, the entire country is only about the size of Jamaica. So essentially, the country is kind of like a river that masquerades as a country. The most important route, though, would have to be the north and south bank roads. You can literally traverse the entire country on this loop road that starts west at Bara and then crosses the river at Batoto and then heads all the way back to Banjul. Keep in mind though, most logistics is easy. That well or at all. Most checkpoints between them and Senegal only appear on major roadways. Otherwise, you can totally cross into Senegal from virtually any open field along the way. A few notable sites would include the Senegambian Stone Circles, the world's largest concentration of stone circles and a UNESCO heritage site. Take Every that, visitor would go Stonehenge. to the Arch 22 where you can get a nice panorama city view. If you have time, check out Kunta Kinte or Fort James Island that has a somewhat austere back. I believe like some Russian billionaire, eccentric billionaire guy wanted to make like a giant tower or something like in the middle of the, the, the Gambia River. It's a true thing. Like, look it up. It was it looked pretty cool, though. 
don't know if it's actually going to happen. Part of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth at one point. Yes, we made it to Africa that one time. And that's the thing. In a lot of places, <laughs> oh yeah, that's Africa, the one that uh, really Poland much of a significance, but rather made. people tend to look at the tribal areas instead. And if that I know that case, Poland had Africa something in Africa. Like this. Nonetheless, they still keep their country intact, and it all oh, has to do God. with that one lifeline. Oh that God! Oh God! I don't even want to look at. It. Uh, it has to do with tribal areas instead. And if that was the case, Africa would probably look more like this. Oh. <sighs> That would be so many capitals you'd have to to memorize. <laughs> Man, see this this would ha this is what what a uh, European Africa would look like if you know what I mean. Because all you know, Europe's usually all the uh, ethnic groups have their own state, kind of not really, but but this is what Africa. Would, oh my god, I I I wouldn't even be able to remember them all. Nobody would. <laughs> Like only the craziest people would. Nonetheless, they still keep their country intact, and it all has to do with that one lifeline that connects them all, the Gambia River. The good old river. Well, to no surprise, Gambia's land makeup pretty much comprises of whatever surrounds the Gambia River. This means that the majority of the land is a flat, grassy floodplain with mangroves closer to the coastline. Like in fact, about 10% of the entire land area is made up of water alone, and the highest point isn't even named. It's just a random hill that goes up 53 meters. Because of its limited space, the Gambia has had to develop a really creative cultivation plan over the past few decades. About 60% of the land area is of good arable quality, of which 40% is used for farming. About 80% of the population lives off of subsistence farming, mostly in rural areas. Areas contributing to about a third of the GDP and 70% of the country's foreign exchange earnings. This means that organization is key. The Gambia has a very complex yet structured format in allocating crop fields. You have compounds, dadabas, mauros, kamayangos, and sinkiros that are administrated by a nakalo. There's also a kind of unspoken custom. Women are in charge of field and garden crops, whereas men are in charge of tree crops. And the river supplies them all with irrigation. Okay. Two food sources that the country thrives off of, of course, seafood and peanuts. The Gambia River supplies Ooh. them with an abundant of fish species like the cassava fish, pampanos, barracuda, Why is everything called a, looper, snapper, and of course everyone a loves cassava in Africa. Oysters. Peanuts are used as a staple in so many dishes like mafe stew and domolda. The country enjoys a relatively warm climate with a rainy season, especially along the coast. However, the further east you travel, the drier and arid the landscape begins until you reach the savanna upper inland. Since the whole country is situated around the river, the uh, okay, say that again, Paul. Becomes or begins? Landscape begins until you reach the travel the drier and arid the landscape begins until you reach the savanna upper inland since the whole country is situated around the river this means that a huge portion of the land is comprised of wetlands and swamps although sometimes hard to cultivate are perfect for harvest happens to us all diversity Paul. animals like no river deal. birds hippos aardvarks geckos crocodiles bush pigs warthogs can be found and even bottlenose dolphins playing in the mouth of the river speaking of which the lion is the official cool. animal I want of the one country as, a pet. as it's found on the coat of arms notable nature zones include the river gambia national park heavily concentrated with wildlife the abuku nature reserve with monkeys and check out the reptile farm in Khartoum. Now let's get a little crazier and talk about who's running the show called The Gambia, shall we? Okay, this is the part where the episode is going to get a little funny. And by that I mean when we discuss politics. First of all, the Gambia has about 2 million people and is one of the least militarized countries in the world. The country is made up of a few main ethnic groups, the largest one being the Mandika at over 40%, the Fula at around 20%, the Wolof at around 16%, the Jola at 10 and the rest is a conglomeration of other Africans like the Serahuli and other non-Africans. Also, they use the Gambian Delasi as their currency, they use the Type G outlet, and they drive on the right side. The hell is that? The largest ethnic group, the Mandika, have lived in the area for centuries, and they are the descendants of the Mali kingdom that stretch all across West Dude, I'm rich. and had one of the richest kings in history. The earliest recordings have shown that the Gambia was subject wasn't to various from Gambia, African right? kingdoms as well, such as the Foni, Combo, Sine, Salum, and the Fulado. Around 90% of the country is Sunni Muslim, and the remaining 10% is Christian. Islam in the Gambia follows the Maliki school of jurisprudence, the system predominantly used in North and West African countries. It's interesting, though, because, kind of like the Comoros, even though the country is predominantly Muslim, Gambian women have incredibly loose clothing customs and statutes. Most women don't even wear the hijab, let alone abayas, but rather the typical pattern also as hot as that. exposed arms and necklines the official language is english well, as the country really. for a while was a colony in arabia of the empire so. until shut up <laughs> i know what i'm talking about Mandinka, wolof fula and jola are spoken as a first language to the majority of the population it's not uncommon to hear people speaking french as a third language though due to their close proximity to senegal and relative isolation from the nearest english-speaking country sierra leone at around 700 kilometers away music is huge out here disputably the wolof people have the best drummers when listening you'll be like yeah that's my jam why would there why was there just white people over there hang on 
which out here disputably the Wolof people have the best. Oh, I get, I guess tourists. Drummers. <laughs> when listening, you'll be like, yeah, that's my jam, Bia. <laughs> Of course, you can't miss out on a mandinka kankurang machete dance, which looks really cool. To address the illiteracy and levels, you they want to stay away from that guy. Glass marble system in which the voter drops a marble in a steel drum to indicate the candidate that they want to choose. The Gambia has a strange political system. Technically, right now, there's a lot of drama between the outgoing president and the new one, this guy, who just won in 2016. I'm pretty sure this is the right picture of the guy. I know I've gotten a few notable figures pictures wrong in the past. Let's never speak. Even of in the future. Again. Speaking of which, the official <laughs> title of the Ronaldo. president is Sheikh Professor Doctor President. Let's just say he claims he has the cure for AIDS, arthritis, diabetes, and infertility. Anyway, John infertility especially. I got the Obama, cure for infertility. Days after ladies, the election ladies, results, he was oh. like, eh, never mind. I guess he thought the results were a sham. Oh. Guys, this is one of my best friends and former roommates, Caleb. Say hi. There's a lot of controversy, though, because Adama has proposed a lot hi, of policies that seem Caleb. to favor the UK, whereas Jameh was literally quoted for saying, Britain has done nothing except teach the Gambians how to sing Ba Ba Black Sheep. Well, interacting with the UK has played a huge they role in the country before and after independence. Let's elaborate. <laughs> The Gambia, as mentioned before, is mainland Africa's smallest country, so to no surprise, they kind of have to make friends to get by. The Gambia plays an active role in West African and Muslim affairs, therefore has been reaching out to other nations like Libya and Mauritania. Mali, though, has a historical root and ties in with the Gambia as the Mandinka peoples have origins in the Malian kingdom. When it comes to Asia, the Gambia has jumped back and forth between recognizing either the People's Republic of China or Taiwan. For Whoever the gives time, me the, the most Gambia money, was the third basically. third African state recognizing Taiwan for about 18 years until Jamai changed his mind in 2013. China didn't respond right away way since they were just a little suspicious but eventually they reopened ties in 2016. The UK is a little tricky <laughs> because suspicion. even though was not a fan of the Brits, the Brits still maintained strong relations. The Gambia is an incredibly popular tourist destination as it's the closest English speaking African country to them and business still carries very well between them. Their two best friends though more or less would probably be Senegal and Sierra Leone. At one point the Gambia was part of both countries under the British colonial times until the French took over then Senegal and Sierra Leone decided to kind of do their own thing. Nonetheless proximity and language are what closely tie these three countries. In conclusion, the Gambia is a small skinny country that literally surrounds the parameters of one river, but man have they made something out of it. Stay tuned! Sacarvelo! I mean, Georgia! It's coming up next. Or Gruzia, as we call it over here. Oh man, that is a terrible name for a country. <laughs> well, not Georgia, but uh, Gruzia. It just sounds terrible, doesn't it? Because <laughs> also, if you just take out the R in Gruzia, it becomes Guzia. <laughs> Uh, all the Balkan people would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hey Jogger Peeps, welcome back to Flag Friday. I really had fun making the Gambia episode because it's such a weird and oddly shaped country. They literally just follow whatever surrounds one river. You can literally like take a day hike from the north border of the country to the south border and like still have time for dinner. I love countries like that. And clearly you'll see how it's portrayed on the flag. So without further ado... Did you say I can take a walk from the beginning of the river and then back? Now, of course, we all know that the most important part of the Gambia That's would have cool. to be I like the that. Gambia River. I like Without small the countries. River, there would be no country and there would be no flag to symbolize it. First of all, the flag is a horizontal banded flag with red, blue, and green with two thin white fimbriation border lines above and below the center blue band. The red represents the sun and the savannas of the east. The green represents the forest and agricultural goods that the people are dependent on economically. And of course, the blue represents the Gambia River that splits the country in two, while the Makes white sense. border stripes represent unity and peace. Now, a lot of people will dispute that the hyena is kind of like the unofficial animal of the country as you can find them in the eastern savannah areas however the lion is actually the official animal on the coat of arms you find two red lions one holding an axe and the other a hoe gracing the sides of a shield adorning the same two tools <laughs> another one has a hoe what was that important axe and the other a hoe gracing the sides of a shield <laughs> is actually the official animal. On the coat of arms, you find two red lions, one holding an axe and the other a hoe, gracing the sides of a shield adorning the same two tools on it, representing I'm like 12 the years importance old. of agriculture and forestry. On top of the shield lies a heraldic helmet and an oil palm European the tree helmet. to make the crest. And at the bottom lies a banner with the words progress, peace, and prosperity. Now keep in mind, when they were a British protectorate, they used this G. flag with the Union Jack canting corner with a cool circular emblem depicting an elephant roaming the countryside with an obvious Just one G coconut. for the Gambia inscribed below. Also, if you take out the white middle border bands, you basically get the flag of the Republic of Karelia, you know, Finland's long lost sister who was kind of separated and became part of Russia. So that's kind of it. I mean, this flag is kind of easy Separated to remember because forcefully. it kind of looks like a flag with a river with white foamy sides flowing through it. So that can remind you of the Gambia because of the river. Hope you liked this episode. This has been Flag Friday. You've just been flagged. Stay cool. Stay tuned.
Okay, Sakarvelo, Gruzia, coming up next. Until then, take care.